How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another Dynamic Projectiles video. Now hopefully you are still with me into making some really fun bullet types for our action platformer game, for your action platformer game, if you've always wanted to make any kind of game that is action oriented and you've never known how to do uh, more fun uh, than the typical platformer shooter game that you'll find. That's what we've been doing, that's what we've, we've been focusing on, how to do really cool bullet types and how to do just a bunch of different things that not a lot of people will tell you and it'll just kind of take you a lot of time to find on the internet if you just start researching and it's a lot of it's a lot of information at once so my hope is that all of these projectile videos have jump started you and that you are getting a better idea as to how you can make your own bullet types and just mess around with those. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make a grenade bullet type, which is going to be a really fun bullet type, but it's also going to be our last bullet type just with this project. So what I mean by that is I've redone this project and I'm actually going to be putting it on the Skira store so you can actually purchase it yourself, but that does not mean that I won't stop teaching how to do every single projectile it's just a way to kind of get frequent updates a lot better than what they currently are at so without further ado let's make our grenade bullet type and then uh, next time that you see a dynamic projectiles video it will be with the new project so what we're going to do is we're going to go onto our game layer here and we're going to make oops that's the new explosion by the way which is really cool and what we're going to do is we're going to double click and make a new sprite and let's make this six by six pixels. And I also have this turned on here just so I can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna color using these colors, that's fine. I'm gonna take my paint bucket tool and right click for the secondary color. I'm gonna grab the pencil tool and left click for the primary color. And I'm just gonna kind of, this is gonna be my grenade for right now. This is going to be the, the grenade that I shoot and that's going to be fine. I'm also actually just going to leave the weapon to be the pistol. It's perfectly okay to have uh, that be our weapon of choice versus what we what we usually do when we make a new gun. I think we're going to save that for the next project, the next version of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this object grenade and I'm going to give it two behaviors. The first behavior I'm going to give it is a timer behavior and the second behavior I'm going to give it is a physics behavior. Now the timer is going to count down until the grenade blows up and the physics behavior is going to actually move the grenade. Now we don't want to give it the bullet behavior or anything like that because that'll move it too quickly and it's too wild to control. So what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to tweak some physics behaviors because there is no properties for our timer. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to bump up the bounciness or the elasticity to one and I think that is all I actually want to do. So that's cool for right now. What we're going to do next is we're going to go to our weapon type event and let me actually minimize these things a little bit and let's copy and paste our bazooka code because I think that'll be the easiest one or the closest one to it. I'm going to put this all the way to the top here just so we can see and that way I can add some events. Our timer events have to be outside of the function here. So what we're going to do uh, is instead of calling the bazooka, we're going to rename this to the grenade and actually let me put that in all caps we're going to call our grenade bullet type and this reminds me let's actually go to our debug events and let's change this to just be our grenade so that way we know what we're testing that way when we hit b it'll automatically be on our grenade and let me hit save and let's do this so we don't want to play the rocket noise now I've already gone ahead and added this noise so when you download this project you'll be able to find it we're gonna play grenade shoot and what we're going to do is we're gonna have our weapons spawn our object grenade just like this everything else is the same now this is where we can stop let's actually put this here and what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these actions out of this event. So we're going to put it in its own event. So what we want to do is we want to actually have it count down. So to do this, let me actually minimize all of this. Let's add the event for our grenade. So let's find object grenade. And what we want to do is we want to say on timer. Now the timer that we're going to make is going to be our grenade. Let's call it grenade explosion. And what we're going to do here is this is where we're actually, let's put this on top. That's why I wanted to do it so you could actually see it this way. And I can zoom in some more. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take pretty much all of the knockback, the screen shake, and the explosion stuff, and we're going to put that on afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, let's just hold down shift, and let's just copy all this and drag it up, or 
there we go that works and what that just did was it allowed us to actually just kind of uh, wait so now we actually need to set the timer to actually count down so what we're going to do is after this after we're setting the weapon type to grenade we're going to add the action to our grenade to actually scroll down to start our timer now how long do we want our timer to run for i'm going to say one and a half seconds and we only want it to run once and the timer that i want it to call is going to be my grenade explosion so that's how timers work they're very easy to use and they're very powerful so what we're going to do after that is i think we're done with this part but we need to fix our code over here so we can actually delete this action since we don't have a rocket and let's actually control copy and paste and then hit i on the keyboard or on this condition to actually invert our mirrored controls and what i want to do here is i want to set the velocity of our physics object that we put onto our object grenade so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the action to our object grenade and i'm going to scroll down or i can type in set velocity which one is going to be faster there it is set velocity and what i want to do here is for if i am mirrored what i want to do is i want to set my x velocity to negative 70 and my y velocity to negative 150. now if you remember this from our shells tutorial uh, this is pretty similar except we're just not choosing a bunch of different options like we did over here i'll show you uh maybe it's not there mm, maybe we didn't do that oh you know what i just let it sit but if you did want to have your shells actually go places this is how you would do it uh, or maybe I didn't do it that way. Doesn't matter. It's a moot point. That was that would be how you actually push out any object with the physics uh, parameter behavior, whatever it's called. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to control click this, and the only thing we have to do for is not mirrored is we have to flip the x component not to be negative. So now it's actually positive. So now let's just walk through what happens. When we click, it's actually going to play the sound, and we might actually want to have it spawn the grenade first. It's going to spawn the grenade, play the sound. And then it's going to set the weapon rate, which is fine right now. We're going to redo that in the main project so we can actually have it click and press and click and hold down. Then we're going to set the weapon type like we always do. And then we're going to start the timer. Now this timer and all of these actions won't be called until one and a half seconds from now. So it's also going to check to see if we're mirrored or if we're not mirrored. And if we're facing left, then we're going to set the grenade physics to the left. And if we're facing right, we're going to set the X position to the right. Cool. So now that we have all of that, there is one last thing that we need to do here and to add a new event here and just to add it on the top I'm just gonna hit B on this event here I'm gonna drag this sub event out and what we need to check is we need to say if the object grenade collides with in this case we want to see if it collides with our collision so our floor then we want to make sure that we're setting the grenade to immovable or to just stop the physics altogether that way it'll actually stop so now we're kind of getting there so now we actually have a code for we have the code for when we collide it's going to stop we have the, the code for when it actually explodes it's going to explode so let's look at that we're going to set the knockback of our weapon we're going to set the screen shake to be pretty big because it was the same for our rocket now let's actually go look at our rocket collision because that's something that was pretty intense where where did i put that i thought our rocket collision was in there Maybe it's not. Hmm. It's interesting that our rocket collision is not in there, but our explosion is in here. So we can just actually spawn the explosion again. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually on our explosion. What we want to do is we want to call our flash functionality. We want to make sure that we flash our layer. So let me see if I can find that anywhere. Where did that go? Oh, it's right here <laughs> I was like wait where did it go okay here it is so let's actually just copy pretty much all of this except for that last bit right there let's copy all of this control C and let's paste this into our grenade right there and now we can see oh not right there right here at the end of our timer here so now we can see what's going to happen now we have a few things that are happening specifically for our rocket so we can actually get rid of most of them so we can actually have uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, we're going to get rid of this one. We're going to get rid of that one. We're going to actually make sure that it does this, but we want to make sure it does this after it plays the sound. Uh, and all of this stuff is kind of just, we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that and we can get rid of that. There we go. And oops, we can get rid of that. 
Cool. So hopefully you've been following along. What we're going to do is when the timer goes off, we're going to set the knockback. We're going to call the screen shake. Now we're going to play the audio of grenade explode. Then we're going to call the flash function. And then we are going to actually, we need to replace this object. So we need to say right click or <laughs> right click, hit R on the keyboard for that action. And we want to pick, uh, that should have given us the chance to, uh, go back. Let's just double click, go back, object grenade, and then hit next. We want this to spawn the explosion and hit OK. Uh, then we're going to wait and then we're going to call another screen shake. So it's going to be a really epic grenade. That's what we want. So again, it is, we're going to, let's just go over this again because there was a lot. We are going to spawn the grenade. We're going to call the grenade shoot. Now this is actually something that we could do differently. Let's actually take this event and hit B on the keyboard and then we can make this a sub event and we can go system trigger once. That way our audio just won't, we'll make sure that it plays once. And we could technically do that for everything, even though we do know from past experience that it works this way. I still like to control it this way as well. So what we're going to do again is we're going to spawn our object grenade at our image point bullet from our weapon. Then we're going to set our weapon rate and then we're setting our weapon type. Then we're starting our timer. While our timer's ticking down, we're going to check to see which way our player was facing. And if it is facing that way, it's going to set the velocity for our grenade to move that way. Now, 70 is not a lot, so you might want to bump that up a lot. And then same thing for if we're not facing, uh, if we're not mirrored, then we're going to trigger our audio. Everything is good there, where if we collide with which we will, so it's gonna collide with the floor before it actually explodes, we're gonna set the physics object to no more, to immovable. Then when we actually do explode, we're gonna set the knockback, we're gonna actually call a screen shake, we're gonna play the sound, and we're gonna flash all in one, and then we're gonna watch as the object grenade explodes. And we can actually probably move this up a little bit. It doesn't really matter, maybe before the flash function, just so we can kind of see that happen. Then we're gonna wait 0.1 seconds to actually have another screen shake. So this will be pretty cool because this is a bigger screen shake. You can see that it lasts for 0.6 seconds, whereas this one only lasts for 0.2. So let's see how this works. Let's hit play and let's hit B. And there we go, and there we go. Cool, so the only thing that it didn't do is we just didn't destroy the grenade, so let's do that. Let's go to our grenade and hit destroy, and let's watch it again. So if I hit B on the keyboard, all right, let's see, right now I'm at the pistol. If I hit B on the keyboard and I click, it's gonna wait, and then it's gonna explode. Awesome. So the only thing that I notice here is we're not setting the angle to the mouse, which is something that we did in the last video where we actually had the camera and the angle to rotate around our mouse, which is a different camera type. We can actually just grab from our pistol uh, this action that we put in the trigger once. We can copy this and put this into our new trigger once, and we can actually, hopefully we can replace this object with our object grenade. And that way, even though we're setting the velocity, we actually have the angle shooting upwards now. If I hit B, it'll actually shoot from the upward position or from wherever that mouse position is and then it'll explode. Now there's a lot of other things that we can do to enhance this and we might enhance this in the future, but at least we have the basic functionality for a cool grenade effect and I really like it. And you can actually add smoke and you can add so many other things, dust particles or actual like burn to the, to the collision to the walls of your level. So there's a lot of things you can do to mess around with this, which is really cool. And even though we haven't set up our weapon rate, if you do hold it down or actually we're on click. So it doesn't really matter what our weapon rate is, but that has been our grenade. I hope you've enjoyed this dynamic project projectiles video and I hope you will check out the new version as soon as it comes out. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I am Jeremy Alexander and I'll see you next time.